Thank you very much uh, indeed, Nigel, and uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, well, uh, we've already heard that uh, after 10 years, uh, programmable marketing uh, is now avowedly mainstream and, and accounting for more than half the market in the US and the UK at least. But uh, the underlying challenge of how to engage consumers, of course, hasn't gone away. Um, our panel today are really on the front line of trying to harness uh, their own understanding of their products and their customers, their own creative skills, the data they have, uh, and all the technological tools at their disposal uh, to try and build their brands and, and maximize sales. Uh, it's a double-edged sword, of course. Um, so many tools means so many choices uh, and all the concomitant dangers of analysis paralysis. With budgetary and time pressure, uh, the question, I guess, for us here in this panel discussion uh, is how can marketers be sure they're making all the right moves? Uh, it's a big subject. We've only got 25 minutes. Um, but uh, what we're really interested in here, hearing from, I think, here uh, with, from this panel uh, is the personal experiences of some of our leading brands in grappling with the challenges they face in this dizzyingly fast-paced environment. I'm delighted to say that we have with us uh, this morning, uh, on my left here, uh, Nick Graham, who's Global Director of Digital Marketing at Highway Technologies, a leading, leading global ICT uh, solutions provider, uh, and uh, a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts, I believe. Um, to his left, uh, we have Andrew Warner, who's uh, VP of Marketing at Monster, uh, responsible for all the marketing uh, activity across uh, Europe, um, and uh, a, a a, a serial uh, Can Lion winner, I believe, from your past life, which uh, we should pay homage to. Um, and then on uh, my far left there, Dominic Groundsell, who's uh, Global Marketing Director of Travelex, uh, vastly experienced marketer uh, and a fellow of the Marketing Society. So let's get this discussion going. We've only got 25 minutes, as I say. Um, just give us some headlines first, guys. How, how is marketing changing? What, what are the sort of top three challenges that you all face? And I'll come perhaps to, to Dominic to start with. Um, so in, in terms of the challenges, I suppose the explosion of digital and data gives you so many more choices and you can do so much more interesting stuff these days. Um, so choosing what to do at the right time is tough. Um, I think the best thing for me is around measurement and really proof that what we're doing is working and moving us out of being the coloring in team to something that's more commercial. Um, and for me, I think the biggest personal issue is how do we find the right people? Because all the, the roles that Carsten just talked about are roles that we have in our business. I'm mm -hmm. accountable for our commercial performance online around the world and we have people who are qualitative, quantitative, but hiring quantitative people for marketing is tough. Right, interesting, great. Andrew. Uh, well, um, as we work for Monster, which is a recruitment company, I can help you with the hiring people thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but no, maybe so maybe take that offline. <laughs> take that offline. But no, the, the, the Dom's absolutely right. I mean, I think that actually one of the interesting things is, is, uh, is the whole people thing and how that's affected marketing teams. I mean, one of the things, I guess, I suppose when you go to log analog marketing conferences, people sort of say, how's marketing changing with digital? And normally the sort of conclusion is everyone kind of goes, no, it isn't. It's all still about the consumer and everyone looks smug and then goes and drinks champagne. And of course, yeah. it has changed. It has changed fundamentally. And I think although the strategy piece is, is still there and it's important that you don't kind of lose track of what it is you're trying to achieve for your organization, the tools that you've got available to you have just infinitely changed. But then the people beneath that, how you actually structure your teams, how you bring that right expertise into your business, how you get the right balance between marketing generalists mm. and technical specialists who really get into the detail of all of that stuff, that's all really challenging. And then you've got the whole organizational challenge as well in terms of how uh, marketing plays a role within the organization with functions like technology or with product or with sales and how a lot of this sort of data is bringing all of those functions together and you've kind of got that sort of figuring out the role of marketing within that infrastructure. Right. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say um, we, we haven't yet as an industry appreciated the depth of the change to some yeah. degree. I think in addition to building on that skill set that, that we've built internally, the, 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 th the top three takeouts for me of you know, what's changed and what's, what's, what's big right now would be you know, that media and tech-led uh, innovation. And that comes into, in, into the content piece, right? So uh, con content, I don't think, has yet, hasn't been disrupted enough yet. And, and, and that comes back into the roles. So yeah. we talk about data scientists. We talk about you know, that whole piece of it, which is very tech-heavy. You know, tech we haven't yet introduced that as, as heavily into, into the creative piece. So that, that's a big area of focus I see that, 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 that's, that, that's coming. 
And that kind of takes me on to the kind of third area, which would be, I think, we're, I think we will very shortly see an end to that kind of first generate internet marketer. Um, I think we're going to see something like, um, you know, the programmatic people, the, the, the content-led creative thinkers are, are a different breed, as it were, mm. to, to what has come before. Do you want to come back on that, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. It's, uh, some you've probably seen sort of Mark Ritson um, speeches recently talking about dreary, dreary digital marketers, and there's no such thing as a digital marketer. And uh, to a degree, he's right. Um, I think the creative thing is really interesting. I think one of the things that we've kind of got fixated about, and I think this is one of the things in digital generally, like I was... In my original bio, I was a digital veteran, which made me sound ancient. But I was, I was in marketing around the time of the dot-com boom, and everyone talked about like, personalization was the big thing. It was like going to be going down to your local corner store, and the guy knew which cheese mm. you wanted. And in reality, a lot of that measurement has been taken to distance brands from consumers. The customer service example given earlier, a lot of that data has been used to drive out cost and yes. to focus on the short term and often measuring the wrong things. I think what we're seeing now is... Uh, a change whereby actually the role of a marketer in terms of having that sort of ability to bring together sort of data science and social science to fuse those two together and, and, and kind of be two-faced, if you like, in a good way, look out to the real world and see how this technology can be applied in real-time situations that actually serve consumers, help them get what they want when they want it rather than get in the way of what they want, which is actually what a lot of digital marketing has, has done in recent years. Uh, I think those are big shifts, and those are things which um, we've got to kind of do away with that whole sort of idea of having people in the galley just working on spreadsheets and, and elevate the marketing strategy and figure out how we're not just talking about platforms, but how we work out how all of these different types of technologies can actually deliver that kind of vision of personalization, which we talked about at the time of the dot-com boom. But, well, just, but just pick that up, that, that point about the, the, the technology, and I'll come to you again, Dominic, on this. The, the, the role that technology plays then, I mean, clearly we've already, I mean, all three of you have said it's going to become increasingly important. Are, are we getting to a point now where the CMO starts outspending the CIO? I mean, is that, is that a big part of your roles? Well, I suppose it, I've heard that before in, in many conferences, and Yes, we are spending a lot more money on technology in the marketing function than we were previously, mm. but it's really about partnership with IT uh, and the realization that, you know, from my point of view, I don't care about third-party data. Yeah. I want first-party data because that's what drives my business. Mm -hmm. My view of profitability, as I understand it within my organization, is what drives decision-making around investment. Yeah. And so I need uh, to be able to link uh, the marketing tools and services that I get from third parties in the market I really integrate them into our back office systems so I can make the best use of that first party data and really link it through to the activity we do in market. Yeah. Um, and for me, that means really strong partnership with IT, but it does mean that marketers have to understand technology in the way that we never had to when I started. I mean, I'm with you. And it also means that marketers, to the point that Andrew raised around measuring the right things, um, content for me is a lot of emperor's new clothes right now. Yeah. Marketers are obsessed by uh, marketing KPIs, views and dwell time, which frankly doesn't mean anything from a business point of view. Show me how that content experience translates into financial results mm -hmm. and I'll buy it all day long. But marketers trumpet clicks and they trumpet dwell time. Businesses don't care, they yeah. don't. And so if we can get the technological piece to link through and prove the case for content, mm -hmm. prove the case for other types of digital marketing, I'll invest in it all day long. Just come to you, Nick. I, I, I mean, your organisation. How do how do people make the? Or how do you and your CIO colleagues? How do you make the choices between the three and a half thousand different options that you've got to to, to buy? I mean, that seems a little yeah. dizzying. I, I, th I think I think I think it does come back to this point: is 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 you know wh where is the value? You know, mm -hmm. s s simple proposition. If if um, you know if if, if you're doing um, you know bog standard iterative work. It, it, it might not have that cut through. So some of the best work we're seeing uh, mm -hmm. at, at the moment come out, of, um, come out of agencies, come out of the markets, is, is around uh, you know, fulfilling on the promise of right ad, right time, right place, right? But, but then taking it, taking it one step further and integrating into, let's say, retail. So there was a great example recently of, uh, of Mark's store in Canada yeah. uh, where there was a, uh, weather, a real time weather activated uh, uh, outdoor iteration. It, also, it was also on, uh, on, on display and mobile. Um, and you know, by having weather activated discount pricing connect through to store, we didn't see that for, 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 a, for a department chain. You know, we haven't seen that in a, you know, I don't think I've seen that before. Um, yeah. you know, and it's happening. So, so, 
there are, there are examples of, of good work. So it comes back to where's the value, how do you connect it through to an endpoint, um, and it is being realized now. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, Andrew, do you want to come in on that? I mean, how, do, how does the, how does the, the you know, the, 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 the way that um, technology is acquired in your organization, how does it work? Is it, is it, do you have control, or are you actually negotiating with your technological colleagues on that? It's a, it's a mix of things. I think... Um, it's almost like, uh, I mean, as a marketer, you know, you kind of go back, if I go back to start my career again, like before the dot-com piece, I did a lot of work in direct marketing, and, um, you know, this idea of kind of the segment of one was kind of like this vision which was out there, you know, sort of unrealizable dream, and it was all about, you know, the timing, but most importantly, the list and getting the right people and the right stuff in front of the right people. And almost now, I think, you kind of feel like it's, it's Christmas Day as a marketer. You come downstairs, you see the yeah. Christmas tree, there's all the presents underneath the tree, uh, but they're all kind of like boxes, and you're not quite sure what's inside. And actually, it's pretty difficult, because they've all got Christmas wrapping paper on, they're all made to look fancy, which one's the right one? And, and the problem is, you pick the wrong one, or you think it's going to be great, and actually, it turns out to be pretty rubbish, instead of those Nike trainers. Your mum bought the ones from Marks and Spencer. No, thanks, Marks and Spencer. It's, um, so, so, so it's really difficult to make the right decisions, and I think one of of the challenges for, for client marketers is also the fact that because now agencies have also built and bought in their own technologies, yeah. uh, it's difficult to understand entirely whether you're being given that kind of independent viewpoint as to what the right solution is for you. So yeah. I think you have to take greater ownership now of your strategy, your objectives, what you're trying to achieve, and take a slightly more agnostic view. Um, you have to understand what it is that you're being sold, which is, which is, a, which is a big change. And I think the other thing which kind of um, sort of comes into that in terms of the technology piece. For us at Monster, often it's a question of, because we kind of are a technology company, I and mean, we sell advertising to other people, so we build some of our own programmatic solutions. We build on other people's platforms, um, but also sometimes we, we buy in, and I think that kind of, and we've acquired companies too in the space, and that kind of understanding of what is the right thing to do is, is a tricky thing because the other thing is it's, it's a big risk that you kind of commit yourself to one technology and six months down the line, something else has come along, what you've invested heavily in has become outdated. So, you know, the technology in the space is moving so fast, but organizations move a lot more slowly than that. So there's lots of dilemmas which you're facing which you never used to face before. And on the agency front, which I think just to pick up on another point which, which Nick raised, which is really interesting, yes, you do see good examples. I mean, we did a, as Expedia, a weather-activated billboard, and it was nice. But it wasn't really the scale. It wasn't really the core of the campaign. It's kind of a nice add-on, which got us some space in campaign magazine. Yeah. You guys are suckers for that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's you know, it, it's, it's, what, it's what gets us promoted, too. Yeah. You do a nice thing, you get us featured in campaign, you get headhunted, it's the way the world works. But, yeah. so the, <laughs> but the reality is, actually doing that kind of creativity at scale is quite hard. And trying to get creative agencies, because... A lot of sort of algorithmically generated dynamic creative is a bit rubbish. And yeah. we heard some examples earlier. You know, often it's, it's interruptive. It's something you've already bought. Uh, it's something which you don't want anymore. Like I got first birthday party stuff pumped at me all the time. My daughter was only one once. And I think that's where creative agencies also can add value. But at the moment, it's really hard. And we did some kind of some video at Expedia where we, we had all sorts of different videos which which targeted people according to what time of day it was, what they were looking at, different types of holidays. But it's very, very hard to do it at the level of scale and do it well, which the technology actually enables you to. So to really capitalise on that is, is another challenge which I think we're going to be facing over the next couple of years. Can, can, I, just, I, just, I, I, can I just build on that point? Because yeah. I suppose for the people in the room who are selling technology solutions to marketers, I think the days when a marketer would take on face value what you're saying have gone. Um, and certainly as we build out our capabilities internally around data analytics, data science, technology, and as we work in combination and in concert with our friends in IT, um, I'm gonna wanna dig really deeply into your solution. I'm gonna wanna understand every single thing that it does, and I wanna know where all the data goes and how it gets there, and not just because I wanna know because it's my data, but also because I wanna be able to prove, because I'm a compliance-led business, that we are doing things in the right way for the customer. And so, when we were very early into programmatic at More Than, which was my last job, we were going into, business, into agencies and then going through the agency to the different layers in the programmatic chain, and we quickly found that not everybody understood what they were talking about. And when you really sweat the details, um, you find that all the glitters isn't gold. So to, to Andrew's point, the trainers in the box are the crappy ones from Marks and Spencers. And so I would strongly advocate if you're selling something to a marketer, Make sure that you're very clear on the technical detail, because I'll want you to be. And if you're not, I'm not buying it. 
Nate, you yeah, want to come in on this again? Yeah, I'd, I'd say in addition to that, I think, I think a lot of the responsibility resides with the marketer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm you know, hugely reliant on, on, on strong partners, and I, and I firmly believe in an open system, but the, you know, when we come back to that creative and content side of it, the onus is on us to, to not request standard banners. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going hard on the, on the standard banner iteration yeah. today, but, but um, you know, mobile, you know, to, 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 to present a solution to that, you know, mobile is, is incredible. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, some, you know, take, take just a, 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 it's now already an old technology, HTML5. You know, what's possible from an from a, from a ad unit perspective you know, is it, truly engaging. It's fun. It, it's... it's you know, it, there is, there is and can be great value exchange work being produced. So, who, who requests that? Is, is it enough for, you know, is, is it enough for, 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 for marketers to say, look, you know, my agency hasn't proposed that, but, you know, ultimately I see time and time again through the, through the conversations I'm having is that we're at fault for requesting very standard work. So, yeah. the innovation needs to come, from, so, so that's on the content side. And then I think to tie, to tie up some of these themes, you know, going through to that, that tech level and the IT and the partnership, you know, this is a big ask of, of, of marketers today. So I think, I think where things have fallen through the cracks is you either get a marketer that, that's skewed on the, on, on the, on the tech side uh, or, 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 or is trying to catch up on the, on, on the content and innovation side. So that, 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 that the, the debate around the art and science and finding that in the marketer, that, that is, you know, that, yeah. that's an ask today in, in, you, in the market. Do you have, as a general point, I mean, do you have the talent in your teams now, yeah. or are you out there looking for new skills? I mean, the sort of yeah. data scientists, yeah. data engineers that we're, we're uh, the last speaker was talking about. Yeah. We've done about, we built a, a digital capability from the ground up over the past two years at TravelX. We've done about three and a half thousand interviews in 18 months. Really? Hired everything from dev, platform, cloud, data science, mm -hmm. and uh, and it is really tough to find people who are great. And from a marketing point of view, that kind of that mixed skill set um, is a really tough thing to find, particularly as you move to more senior levels. And so you create this gulf between the leader of the of the team or the leadership of the marketing function and the very deep technical expertise that sits at the coal face. Yeah. And so the management challenges going from management through expertise and experience to management by objectives in a kind of Drucker style, just here's your objective. I don't know how you're going to do it, but go and do it, please. Yeah. Um, because I can't possibly manage people who are that deep in the technology. In the technology. Yeah. yeah. We, we, I mean, the last, when I've been at Monster, what, not quite two years, but certainly probably the first year, the main focus was organization. Yeah. Um, largely because of some of these challenges. And, and the reality is that most, certainly most digital businesses um, are quite lean on headcount. You can't sort of recruit legions of people unless you can build a really good business case around it. And, that, and that's hard. And so um, you have to work with a fairly lean team. And I think one of the things that we've done is, is we've, we've looked at how we can make the team more agile, uh, which is such a jargon, I can't believe I just used that word, but, but it's true. It's kind of like... Um, it's, it's flat structures. We've taken away sort of country barriers, for example. So the, t the European marketing team, you know, you've got people in Germany, people in France, people in Italy, people in Sweden, people in the UK who are on the same team or all working together. And the technology enables that. But getting that right balance of specialism, um, so you've got the right people who understand the execution uh, at a detailed level to do the stuff that Don was talking about, so they can go and interrogate the media agency or, or the platform supplier who is to make sure that they're not full of crap and what they're selling you and actually delivers what it says it's going to deliver and your data is protected, all that good stuff. That is a specialism. You need people who understand that stuff now, but you also still need the people who really get the marketing strategy, the creative side. You have to have that right blend of people. And as a, as a CMO, a marketing director, you're kind of like the conductor of the orchestra bringing that all together now because it's rare that you'll get one person who's in that. But then also that drives challenges for things like career development as well. And, you know, you've got someone who's a really fantastic SEO expert. Um, you know, they're not going to have the generalist skills to go up to marketing director. So you have to no, work. And they don't want to. And they don't want to. And, and, and that's yeah. a big change as well. So you have to kind of accept career paths are going to change as well and, and, and sort of give that some thought as well. Mm. I mean, it's an incredibly fluid environment. Just the last, in the last five minutes or so, I just want to touch on, on one final theme, really, which is, which is about the output. I mean, obviously, we've talked a lot about the process and, and about, the obviously, huge organiz organizational change that you're all going through. Um, but in terms of what you're actually producing, I mean, are, are, is, is marketing becoming genuinely more accountable? Are we, you know, is it a profit center within the business now? Or are we not there yet? If it's not, it shouldn't be in the business, <laughs> yeah. frankly. Um, you know, we lived for too many years saying, I know 50% of my marketing is working, but I don't know which 50%. Yeah. It's laughable. The fact that we looked the business in the eye and said, give us 10, 15 million pounds, 30 million pounds for our marketing campaigns. 
we hope it'll work, or brand awareness has gone up. What yeah. does that mean? So if we aren't producing results for the business, there is no purpose for marketing at all. So yeah. if it doesn't, and the same, you, if you don't, you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. Is that, is that your to a degree? Point? I mean, I think the, 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 that quote, sort of the fifty percent thing, gets overused because I think the thing is that actually, in reality, the fifty percent um, was probably making a difference. And I think the the challenge was that we weren't able to prove it. And it's a blend now. I think one of the challenges that we've got with some of this data is that we use it in ways that, because as marketeers, we're so embarrassed about the fact that we couldn't prove what we were doing we were working, we just latched onto any data that we could. As Dom said earlier, you know, our oh, click-through rates are up, whatever. And so instead of brand awareness, it's some other rubbish metric. You know, we, re we, we get really excited. We're like, oh my God, I've just got 0.02 response rate on my banner campaign. And it's like, you know, back in the days when I was doing direct marketing, you know, that would be a fail. That would be a, like, don't yeah. ever try that again. So, so we, have to, we have to still keep our standards up and not get sort of caught into um, sort of the language of digital marketing and forgetting what marketing is all about and the, and the overall commercial objectives of what we do. But actually, a lot of the rigor of... But if you look, I find, if you look back to the sort of the days of kind of bird and direct marketing, a lot of those sort of create and control groups, the whole test and learn mentality, we've lost a little bit of that. And if we put it back in place, if marketing's not profitable, you shouldn't be doing it. But actually, you have to look at it not just in terms of the sort of the duration of the month when you've got the campaign running, which is the temptation, but also figure out how you're building the long-term, how you're building the long-term brand equity. All that stuff hasn't gone away, and the risk is you lose it. And as marketeers, we have to champion those things and build the data constructs to prove those mm -hmm. cases. You know, at Expedia, they stopped doing TV advertising because they couldn't prove it worked. And we actually found a way through putting in place some rigor with outside of the digital world that showed that actually mm -hmm. that blend of traditional advertising and digital was more powerful and drove more profit. I mean, Nick, you, yeah. you've just hired yeah. Scarlett Johansson and Henry Cavill for your new P9 smartphone. I mean, you're obviously committed to creative work alongside yeah, the measurement. I, 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 absolutely. On, on, on the measurement topic, though, because I think this is a real fruitful area. As an industry, we're, we're, um, you know, we talk about data science and, 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 um, and, 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 that, and that space. I think we've, we've, we've certainly done it. We've oversold the internet in terms of accountability. So, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of not everything that can be counted, should be counted. Um, measure the right things, you know, put that marketing spin on it because, um, you know, sometimes reaching the right audience in, in terms of, uh, you know, and, and there, can, there can be wastage in that. I, you know, I think, I think the, it's not wastage, you know, it's, you know, then it's prospecting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. I, think, I think we need to be really careful around, around overly optimized work. So, you know, absolutely reach the right audience, leverage technology, leverage the data points to get there. But if you know, if 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 there's a if there's a um, uh, if if there's a, a broader audience, so we say, to just that tightly focused uh, point, you know, it's not always bad. So we need to look at it more intelligently. We yeah. need to look at it with a marketing hat on. Um, and I think, I think, I think that's that, that that that's something that's really important for for our industry. In that, if when we go into this over-optimized uh, world. You know, we, we don't always see the return. We right. see innovation cut yeah. so it, too soon. Uh, we also don't allow for enough creativity in that process. So that buffer where 50% we didn't know what was going on, you know, the, you know, it allows for greater, a lot of freedom. So you know, uh, you know, what, what I would suggest is you know, look at things with a, with a, with a, with a broader lens. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, I'm, we'd love to carry on, or we'd love to carry on anyway, um, to whether you want to listen, and that's, a, that's another yeah. matter, and which I won't put to the audience. Uh, but listen, thank you so much uh, for listening. Uh, thank you once again to my panel this morning, to Dominic, to Andrew, to Nick. It's been a fascinating discussion. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference, and uh, I think well, I'm going to hand back now to Nigel. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.